In this video, we will take a comparative look at two yield curve strategies and these are the barbell strategy and the bullet strategy. We will take a look at how each one of them is implemented and we will take a look at the advantages and disadvantages of each one of them. Let's begin with quick definitions. A bullet strategy is one in which you will be placing your entire investable funds into bonds whose maturities are concentrated or localized around a single chosen maturity. Okay. For the purpose of this video, let's assume that if an entire spectrum of maturities is available to you in a bullet strategy, you will be focusing only on medium term or let's say intermediate maturities. Then when it comes to a barbell strategy, you will be splitting your investment funds, your investable funds and you will be investing in short term bonds and in long term bonds. You will not be investing in intermediate or medium term bonds. Okay, So let's begin by making a few assumptions. Let me assume that my spot rate term structure is flat. Let me assume that the maturity spectrum available in the market only offers actually three bonds. I have a short term bond let's say with the maturity T low, a long term bond with the maturity T high and somewhere in between a medium term bond with a maturity T mid. These three bonds let them be coupon bonds and therefore their respective durations are less than these maturities T low, T mid and T high. Let the durations be D low, D mid and D high. Okay. Now, as far as implementing these strategies is concerned, bullet and barbell, when it comes to bullet, all you have to do is you have to place your entire investable funds. Let's assume that it's one dollar on a single bond. Okay, you only have one bond available in this intermediate range and this is the bond with maturity T mid. Okay, so the entire one dollar placed on this bond which has a maturity T mid. When it comes to the barbell strategy, as I have already told you, you will be splitting your investable funds into short term bonds and long term bonds. So let it be that you have invested W dollars in this bond, a bond with maturity T low and the remaining 1 minus W dollars in this bond. The, mature, the bond with maturity T high. Okay, So this makes sure that the total sum invested in the two strategies is the same. It's one dollar in both cases. Let's also assume that from a risk standpoint both these strategies they carry the same interest rate risk as measured by duration. Okay, So I want to create my barbell strategy in such a way so that it has the same duration as my bullet strategy. My bullet strategy since it invests in a single bond will have a duration of D mid. I know this that duration of a portfolio is the market value weighted average of the duration of the constituents that go into the portfolio. Therefore, the duration of the barbell strategy can be written as W times the duration of this bond which I know is D low plus 1 minus W times the duration of this bond which is D high. Okay? Since I want to make sure that the durations of these two strategies they are equal therefore I can write down this equation. Left hand side duration of barbell, right hand side duration of bullet. The only variable in this equation which I don't know is W. So you can solve for W using this equation. Okay, So once you've created your barbell portfolio, you can always ask yourself this question. We have equated the total dollar amount invested. We have equated the duration. But what about convexity? Okay, Now, First thing to note about convexity is that for a portfolio it follows the same rule as is the case for duration. 
that means for a portfolio the convexity is equal to the market value weighted average of the convexities of the individual securities that enter the portfolio okay so let's do this let's write down the convexities of the two strategies the convexity of the bullet strategy very simple is the convexity of this bond let it be c mid or let me just call it as c bullet the convexity of the barbell strategy will be equal to w times the convexity of this guy let's call it c low plus 1 minus w times the convexity of this guy let's call it c high okay now at this stage please note that while duration it scales approximately linearly with the maturity of the bond convexity it scales with the square of the maturity of any given bond okay so since this guy is the convexity of this bond which has a very high maturity and I am saying that convexity scales with the square of the maturity C high will be considerably higher compared to C mid and C low. Therefore when I combine the C low and the C high using this equation W times C low plus 1 minus W times C high the resulting convexity of the barbell strategy would come out to be greater than the convexity of the bullet strategy okay so i can write down that c barbell is greater than c bullet okay now let's come to understanding the pnl or let's say the returns offered by these two strategies over our chosen investment horizon Let's begin by assuming that interest rates don't change over our investment horizon. So let me assume that delta R which denotes the change in my interest rates is equal to zero. Please note that if my term structure is flat and also I'm assuming that interest rates don't change over time then it means that these three bonds they will all deliver the same return. Okay, so it tells me that the return offered by the bullet strategy should be equal to the return offered by the barbell strategy because the return offered by this strategy is simply a weighted average of the returns offered by the short term bond and the long term bond and I am saying that all these three bonds they will offer the same return if interest rates don't change over time. Okay, so this tells me that for this assumption, the returns offered by both these strategies will be the same. Now, if I were to assume that interest rates do change over my investment horizon and the change in the interest rates is such that the term structure, which is assumed to be flat, moves in parallel. Okay, so it stays flat and it moves in parallel. For this particular change in interest rates, I can approximate the percentage change in the value of any given strategy using this simple formula. The percentage change is approximately minus duration that times the change, the parallel shift in my interest rates plus half convexity times the change in my interest rates squared. Okay, if I were to compare these two strategies, the amount invested is $1 in both these strategies. So the beginning, the starting V is the same. The duration of both these strategies is the same. What differs between these two strategies is the convexity. The convexity of the barbell is greater than the convexity of the bullet. So irrespective of whether my interest rates shift upwards or whether they shift downwards this term works more in the favor of the barbell strategy as compared to the bullet strategy see this delta r is being squared it doesn't matter if this delta r is positive or negative because c barbell is greater than c bullet this term works in the favor of barbell okay so it tells me that if interest rates change and this change is a parallel shift the barbell strategy wins over the bullet strategy okay combining these two scenarios together 
tells me that if I were to assume that term structure of interest rates is flat and it can only move in parallel, I have introduced arbitrage into my model which I am working with. Okay, what is the arbitrage? The arbitrage is that the barbell dominates over the bullet. So an arbitrager can buy the barbell and sell the bullet. And this buy and sell is done in equal dollar amounts. Okay, so this is where I have landed up with. Okay, I made some simplifying assumptions. I created two strategies and what I have found out now is that one of the two strategies is dominating the other strategy and therefore I am exposing myself to arbitrage. Okay. Now, to compare these two strategies on a more equal footing, let's do this. Let's relax these assumptions that we have been making. To begin with, let's relax this assumption that we only allow for parallel shifts in our interest rate term structure. Let's begin by allowing for a steepening. We have a steepening here, a very stylized one, in which the yield of the bullet strategy stays unchanged. The short term bond, the bond with majority T low in our barbell portfolio undergoes a reduction in the yield and the long term bond in the barbell portfolio undergoes an equal magnitude increase in yield. Okay, so you can quickly reason this out that because of this steepening, the bullet strategy does not experience any instantaneous gain or loss. For the barbell, the short term bond experiences a gain and the long term bond experiences a loss. Because the duration of the long term bond is greater than the duration of the short term bond on a net net basis, it's the barbell which undergoes an instantaneous loss. Okay, so comparing the bullet and the barbell, finally we have a situation wherein the bullet wins over the barbell. Now, if you were to allow for a flattening of the interest rate term structure, again a very stylized one in which the yield of the bullet stays unchanged, the yield of the short term bond increases and the yield of the long term bond decreases by the same amount. Okay, So, for this situation, again you can reason this out that this bond it experiences a loss this bond experiences a gain because the duration of this bond is greater than the duration of this bond the gain is much greater than the loss and therefore the barbell experiences a net overall gain okay so if you have a flattening of the interest rate term structure you will observe that the barbell wins over the bullet okay now let me do this Finally, let me relax this assumption, one in which I was assuming a flat interest rate term structure and let me quickly list for you the key takeaways of this video. So if I were to move to this kind of a term structure, one which is closer to what we observe in reality, you will see that this term structure is an upward sloping one. Interest rates, they do increase with tenor slash maturity but at a decreasing rate. Okay, So, if you were to take this term structure and compare the promised yields of bullet and barbell, what you will observe is that the yield of the bullet comes out to be greater than the weighted average of the yields of the short term bond and the long term bond which are included in the barbell. Okay, So, it's like, you know, what it's telling us is that investors, they are paying slightly extra for the barbell because of its convexity related benefits. If interest rates don't change over time, then the bullet offers a better promised yield or return compared to the barbell. If interest rates do change and the change is in the form of a parallel shift in the interest rate term structure, investors in the barbell do get benefited because of its higher convexity. The barbell 
wins over the bullet. For this term structure also, if there were to be a steepening, please remember the bullet wins over the barbell. For this term structure, if there were to be a flattening, please do remember that barbell wins over the bullet. Okay, so what I have done is I have taken you through four different situations and I have told you which of the two wins in each of these four situations. What is then the final takeaway? From a portfolio manager's perspective, the choice between these two strategies therefore depends on the interest rate forecast. Okay, are interest rates expected to stay the same? Would they be moving in parallel? Would there be a steepening or would there be a flattening? That will decide which of the two strategies the portfolio manager should go for. Okay, this video was about a comparison between the bullet strategy and the barbell strategy.